So before we start today's video, I thought I would announce that tonight, 9 o'clock p.m. GMT, I will be hosting a Euro Truck of Peace Simulator stream over on the Omega On Plays channel. Link to that below. Now, after yesterday's rip-roaring success of a video and the excessive number of streams I have done this week covering rather important Brexit-related stuff, sarcasm on the first one, because I made a huge mistake, I thought perhaps we would end the week on a more light-hearted subject that amused me to no end. See, we've all heard of the old-fashioned ways of curing certain ailments. Let's take the headache. It was common practice that to cure the headache, one would drill a hole into the skull to let the evil spirit out. Can you imagine if we still used that instead of ibuprofen? Wow. Or how about the fact that even though carrots are a good diuretic now, a natural one no less, back in 16th century, a rotten mouse was given to children to eat to remedy pissing the bed. I'm not even joking. Or how about in Venice in 1504, the assured remedy for the plague, where you take of a healthy male young child's water, fine treacle and aniseed water of each of like quantity, mingle them and give about a quarter of a pint or a little more at time of it to the patient in the morning fasting for three mornings altogether, this hath cured many. Isn't it fantastic to see how far medical science has come since then? Although I still think it would be hilarious to attempt to cure asthma with boiled carrots. Do I need my sarcasm sign for this as well? Oh, and in before someone says, you're about to cover low-hanging fruit. I'm just trying to be light-hearted for a day because I'm really, really tired. Now, the reason I bring up these rather bizarre cures from Europe is that they are not as bizarre as some of the, quotes, cures that come to us from places like China, where some cures involved inserting things into your backside. Basically, the UFO treatment. Now, I'm sure many of you have seen the South Park episode concerning Lemmy Winks and his amazing quest. How about Mr. Slave and Britney Spears? Have you seen that episode? They were very powerful, and you've got to give them credit. Spears was put in her place, where she belongs, up a faggot's bottom. What happened next, though? Absolute mystery. The reason, for those who hadn't guessed why I brought up Lemmy Winks, was because of this supposed cure for constipation that we're about to cover, where a man tried to cure his constipation by putting a live 20-inch eel up his anus. Now, I have been fishing in the past in some streams where eels are common. Eels are a bit slimy, so natural lubricant does come in handy here. With it being live, well, you've got to marvel at his uh, ingenuity at managing to get his hands around something so slimy to then insert a live thing which has teeth that, by the way, go backwards. So if that thing bit something, it was getting ripped off. And continue to insert it, which I'm assuming once it got enough purchase, because eels, some eels, have the capacity when they're uh, caught. A conger eel is a perfect example. I've caught one before. And it has instead managed to get itself into a hole, which it then expanded itself inside so that I could not then actually reel it in. I've only just realised how much I know about eels here. The barbed teeth that go backwards, the slimy skin, the fact that they have quite good defence capabilities. Part of me is now curious what would have happened had he put an electric eel up his bottom. Might it have tickled his prostate, perhaps? I'm sure if given a chance, it would have. And that would have been hilarious. Imagine that hospital visit. You're not just going in because you've got an eel up your bottom, you're going in because your prostate is being given the battering of a lifetime, with jolts that it has never experienced, to the point where you cannot, and probably won't, be able to use your cock for a while. Now that is funny. This cure for constipation comes from China, of course, as I earlier mentioned, and the Chinese man did have to undergo an emergency surgery to remove the live eel from his intestines. That doesn't surprise me, because as I mentioned, the sliminess that some eels have with their defences, once they're in a position where they can move, if it's live especially, it's going to go forward, because it can't reverse. So this slimy, phallic-shaped, live beast is now going on an adventure 
probably being guided by the same spirit animals that guided Lemmywinks. Oh, and in case anyone hasn't considered this, there is zero scientific evidence that would confirm that an eel will do anything to help your digestive system except destroy you. One would surmise that the reason the man did this was due to a lack of education. So I do have to ask, does Guangdong, and I don't care if I've mispronounced that, have an issue with education that it is still considered reasonable to fob off these old folk remedies? Unsurprisingly, when this Chinese man who is nameless went to the hospital experiencing his abdominal pain, he didn't tell them there was an eel in his body. It wasn't until they got him into an emergency surgery, I would surmise because they saw something move around inside him like from a scene in Aliens. Never eat the special soup, everyone. Now, upon completing the surgery, and of course the man waking up, the doctors naturally wanted to know how bored were you that you put an eel up your bottom and how odd, how difficult was it for you to do it on your own? Okay, no, they didn't ask that, but I am curious myself, if you're watching this, by the way, Mr. Chinese man who stuck an eel up his bottom, I'd like to know how you managed it, or whether it was simply a case that you just laid there and let the thing do its job. When he was asked, in all seriousness, he was asked after the surgery how it got there. He had first told the doctors that it swam up his bottom by itself, which of course doesn't really stack up. I'd assume they realised his sphincter was a little too tight for the eel to get up, even with its own self-lubrication. I know there are other species of eel, but I'm being intentionally a dick. It's Friday, cut me a break. Now the guy has since confessed, and I'm very glad he did, that it was because he had constipation issues, and his friends, big air quotes around the word friends, told him about this folk remedy, and said the eel could clear the blockage. It's not like one of those tools used, or drills used in underground tunnels. That's not what it is at all. In fact, you're trying to imply the eel would eat it, would work its way towards the blockage, clearing the mess, but by extension, that mess would still find its way into the eel, which would then in turn create waste or get bigger, therefore creating a new blockage that might be lubricated. Do you not have prunes, or pentalax, or some really strong apple juice, or some coffee? How about bran muffins and licorice? <laughs> oh, this is brilliant. I love that last week we covered the Glade incident, and we're finishing this week on this. <laughs> Now, the biggest takeaway from this for me is that if your friends tell you to shove an eel up your ass, you need to think about the kind of friends you have. And if your friends tell you to shove a live eel up your backside, and you then do it, I just want to high-five your friends. Because they've found one so gullible, they will actually inflict immense discomfort upon themselves and go through an actual surgery because they couldn't poop. <sighs> Fix your diet, or get a laxative, please. Now to finish, I thought I would give some sound advice to the Chinese man. I'm going to give you a list of things that will help you with your constipation. 1. Drink more water. 2. Eat more fibre. 3. Exercise. 4. Drink coffee. 5. Take senna and herbal laxative. 6. Eat probiotic foods. 7. Over-the-counter or prescription laxatives. 8. Try a low FODMAP diet. 9. Eat shirataki noodles or take a glucomannan supplement. 10. Eat prebiotic foods. 11. Try magnesium citrate or citrate. 12. Eat prunes. 13. Try avoiding dairy. You are all welcome. Now I hope you all have a lovely Friday, Saturday and Sunday of course. See you here on Monday and thank you all for listening.